Here we are in Savile Row, a busy Mayfair street that started as a row of terraced houses behind the great palaces of Piccadilly. It's taken on a particular life over time. As the street has become home to classic men's outfitters, the nature of the terrace house has adapted to create large-scale display windows with cutting rooms and fitting rooms beyond. But at the far end is the building that we're focusing on, number 23 Savile Row. This is a relatively big building for the area. It's about 50 metres wide by 40 metres deep. The issue of scale and working to the street is very important and it's mediated in a number of ways. At the base is this dark, honed Indian granite that sets a horizon above which rises four floors of Portland stone wall and then set back two floors of aluminium. The stone uses a tradition of openings that are recessive, so there's an outer skin and an inner skin that create shadow. Vertically, that shadow is emphasized by the horizontal string courses that run round the building. And the openings are given further depth by the extruded aluminium sections that are drawn away from the glass and create reflection and emphasize depth. This is not a building that has a frame that's expressed with cladding on the outside. So it is a structural wall. From the outside, the structure of the wall looks like windows punched into the wall. And from the inside, the floor to ceiling glass creates a sense of rhythmic piers like the stoa of a Greek town. Internally is a enormous span of 15 meters and it wraps around the building creating a continuous space of a scale that is unlike anything in this area, which adds a premium value to the property. By contrast to the rigidity and mechanistic nature of the architecture, Joel Shapiro's sculpture in cast bronze plays a theatrical part in the street. It's suspended by six cables that hold it in place, dancing above the canopy of the entrance. The metamorphosis of material is evident in the way in which the saw marks of the timber have come to be represented in the cast bronze and the light patination that allows them to be read both internally and externally. The walls to the first five floors of this building rise directly from the pavement to a cornice line that reflects the scale of the surrounding streets. Set back, there are then two further floors, and they provide terraces that are a wonderful place for the reflection of one's own business, or indeed, over the cityscape of Mayfair, one of the most intriguing and successful urban locations in the world.